Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. It is hot, hot, hot here today. Oh my goodness. Oh, I wish I could say this is a heat wave, but I think this is just summer. <laughs> and I am loving the sunshine. I can't really say I love the heat. It's also very, very humid here. Um, yeah, like 88 or 90% humidity. It's very humid. And I think that's what makes it a tiny bit or or a lot, a lot hotter. Oh uh, man, it is really hot. Yeah, <laughs> I can't stop saying it, it's so hot. One place that is also typically really hot in the summertime, but definitely not as humid as it is here in Maine, is the desert. And it is gorgeous. I'm not a fan of heat. Uh, I think I'm more of a shoulder season kind of person. <laughs> but I do love the summertime for all that it helps us do. And when Damien and I were living in Colorado, we got to visit a lot of really beautiful desert land and it still to this day continues to inspire me. So this week's painting is going to be a desert landscape of just something I guess I'm making up from memory. Not anything that I'm using a reference photo for, but I do have my days of missing the desert. It has, like I said, its own beauty. It's a really dry heat, which I think in some ways for me makes it a tiny bit better. Um, but it's just gorgeous. I love the desert and I love Colorado. And um, I love Maine too, don't get me wrong, but I do miss the dry heat. <laughs> so anyway, without any further ado, I'll jump over to this week's painting process. I hope you'll want to join me in painting uh, a little desert landscape of your own or some other kind of landscape if that would be your preference. And if you just feel like sitting down, grabbing a cup of your favorite brew and relaxing with me, I would love to have you along. Thankfully, it's a little bit cooler inside my studio. Um, I have to kind of have a bit of a strategic layout. I have a fan outside my studio door because if I have a fan inside, I noticed last week that it affects the quality of the video sound. And so I'm going to try to bear through the heat and uh, do the editing portion of the video. But um, if it gets too hot, <laughs> I might get a little quiet. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to do my best to keep the audio or the, the voiceover going and hopefully it'll all turn out okay. I've put a little bit of water in some of my watercolor pans and I'm gonna start my process off by mixing a shade of light gray and I usually do this by mixing a light red with a blue. Uh, in this case I think it's called intense blue it's a very, very light wash of blue with a very light wash of light red. And I mix the two together and it usually creates a sort of bluish gray that I really like. And this is how I'm going to start my process. I mixed my color using a smaller brush and now I'm coming in with my mop brush to add the wash of color over my paper. I find that it is usually best to work with a bigger brush if I'm working on a relatively large surface.
Now that the paper is dry, I've removed all the salt and I'm going to start adding the colors of my landscape. Since of course I'll be working on a desert landscape, I'm going to stick to using some more earthy tones for my painting. And I will include a little bit of green because even though it is the desert, you can find some greenery either on the outskirts or everywhere um, here and there in, in little spots in the desert where there's a little bit more water. And um, in Arizona, I believe, there are saguaros. So those are green. They are a beautiful cacti. And I want to include one of those in here and it will be green as well. So I'm using some greens, a little bit of like an earthy yellow, and I'm going to be working with some quinacridone deep gold um, of different shades. Don't worry about keeping note of any of that. It's all in my video description. Uh, just check below and you'll see everything I've used to create this painting. Before I intensify my colors anymore, I want to come in and add my saguaro. And I want to do so now because if I wait a little bit too late, uh, a little bit later, and I intensify my colors too much, it's going to be harder for me to um, include it in the landscape without it showing parts of the background within the cacti, the cactus. So that could potentially be actually very interesting, but for the look I am trying to go for, I guess, I would prefer to try and keep the saguaro um, a little bit more intact and <laughs> not have it confused with anything else, I guess. So an interesting fact about the saguaros is that they can only really grow 
in areas where there's a perfect balance of heat and rainfall in order for them to thrive. And it can never, of course, get too cold either, because if it does, um, then it really uh, makes them very vulnerable. And so saguaros in the U.S. are found mostly in the southern part of Arizona, in the Sonoran Desert. While we were living in Colorado, I was very lucky to be able to travel to many other states that have beautiful desert landscapes, such as Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and of course Colorado also has its beautiful desert landscapes, but it is a lot um, more cold in Colorado, typically in the wintertime, and so I don't think um, saguaros would ever really be able to survive there. But I did get to see them in Arizona, and I, I'm very happy I did get that chance. I want to start intensifying some of the earthy oranges that um, I have in my desert landscape. But before I am able to do this, I needed to let all of the paint, especially near the cactus, I needed to let that dry. Otherwise, as soon as I added any wet paint next to the cactus, it would have, that the new paint would have seeped into the cactus and that was what something that I was really trying to avoid um, but again when you're painting always try to experiment and do different things to see how your paints work and see what you enjoy because sometimes when we're experimenting and trying new things trying different things than maybe we've seen other people do we might discover a way that we personally really enjoy moving the paint and so that is another way that we can build on developing our own personal style of painting.
I'm feeling really satisfied with the colors I've added to my landscape and now I'm ready to move on to adding some details using some ink. And one of my favorite tools to work with over watercolor paper using ink is my fountain pen. I find that it works really well because it's got a metal tip. I don't need to worry about the tip being ruined by the rough texture of the watercolor paper and it typically flows very easily. If it ever gets clogged up even in the tiniest bit, I can easily just rub it on my paper towel and keep moving.
I've surely mentioned on more than one occasion that green is my favorite color, but it can be very overwhelming in a painting, and I think in this case it works incredibly well as sort of an accent color. It helps to sort of break up the, what could be monotony of having all of the same earthy tones, and I think it adds a nice little element of surprise um, to the painting. It's not absolutely unusual to see green in the desert, but it definitely is not the norm. <laughs> Most deserts are not very green at all. So there's a little bit of green in here, I think just enough, and uh, just enough so the saguaro can thrive. <laughs> And then the rest is more in the neutral earthy tones. And I love how the colors are all playing together. Just to keep working on building balance in the painting, I'll add a little touch of this beautiful iridescent green gold to the bottom part of the painting as well. Now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the painting process, and that is the addition of gold. <laughs> In this instance, I feel that the best gold for this particular painting is a gold called Classical Gold from my CSY Art Gallery little gold palette. It's a gold I really love, and I think it's the perfect enhancer for this painting. Just about everything we experience in this lifetime is relative. What I consider to be very hot may be to someone else not so hot at all because they've experienced much hotter temperatures in their own climate. For me, 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit is very hot. I'm um, from the Northeast. And our average temperatures in the summer are typically mostly in the 70s, so in the 20s, in the mid to high 20s. Um, so just a few degrees of more heat, especially when it's added on top of humidity, makes a huge difference. So I, I don't mean to <laughs> downplay how much heat other people are dealing with. I'm just saying that for me this is a lot of heat and it's not something that I really enjoy. There are people out there who thrive on heat and who want to live in places like Arizona or um, much warmer places and I think that's wonderful. I definitely love visiting these places and I do hope that I get a chance to go back to some of those warm desert places that I visited in the past. Like I said, for me, there's something about dry heat that seems a little bit more tolerable, but it also happens to be that I was younger when I was living in Colorado, so it may just be that <laughs> as I'm aging, I'm not tolerating heat all that well. <laughs> That's a possibility too. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the desert's beautiful, Maine is beautiful, the whole world we live in is gorgeous and we are very very lucky to have this beautiful planet and that's why it's important for me that I do everything I can to treat it the best I can. Of course, no desert landscape would be quite the same without the presence of the sun. And so I've used my compass to draw in some circles. And now I'm going to come in with the same classical gold I used earlier. And I'm going to color in the rings that I've created and the circle of my sun.
I often get asked why I prefer to tape my paper on a solid surface rather than stretch it and uh, or leave it on the paper block. For me, I number one love the addition of the tape because it adds a border, a crisp white border to my painting and I like that. And I also love to tape my paper on a rigid surface because it prevents the paper from buckling for the most part and it also allows me to change the angle of my painting or to turn my painting around as I'm working so that I can look at it from different angles or so that I can access different features of the painting with my brush more easily. I love to share my personal preferences for working creatively with you here on YouTube, but that doesn't mean there aren't other ways to work. And so it's always about trying to find the techniques and the, and the um, I guess, the different ways of working that work best for ourselves. We all have different preferences and there is no best way to do it unless it's the way you prefer to do it that's kind of how i like to look at things so i always encourage you to try different things even if it's not something that i'm doing it, there may be other ways of working that you would enjoy better so don't feel that you need to absolutely do exactly things exactly the way i do them this is my way of doing it not necessarily the best way but it's the way I like to do it and I would encourage you to try and find the way that works best for you. Just to add a little bit more value balance in my painting, I've decided to add some stippling around the circle of my sun. And once I'm done doing this, I feel that I am ready to call this painting complete. Life always has a way of guiding me to my next painting project. I really wasn't too sure what I would paint for this week's video and life just handed it over to me. One with someone saying that they really enjoyed one of my previous desert landscape videos and then the heat came along and I knew for sure that that was the way to go. <laughs> and I enjoyed painting this beautiful little desert landscape, well I guess I'm always a little biased. I like to call my paintings beautiful, but you can judge for yourself. I did enjoy making this painting and I do love the way it turned out. And I hope you enjoyed watching the process or even better, I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. I really enjoy painting landscapes. It's not something I do all the time, but every time I do it, I really have fun. Is landscape painting something you enjoy as well? If not, what kind of paintings do you like to create? 
As I do every week, I really look forward to seeing what you have to share with me in the comment section this week. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And remember friends, happy creating! <laughs>